Hello fellow planeswalkers, it's Scott, and today we're going to get our first look at the Wilds of Eldraine. we got a number of cards to look at today from the previews that were shown at Pro Tour Barcelona, but before we get into that, special thanks to Caffeinated Gamers for sponsoring this video and our other Wild of Eldraine spoiler videos. Remember to like and subscribe to get further content like this throughout Wilds of Eldraine spoiler season. So let's get started. So our first cards are the basic lands and we get full art lands again from the set which is becoming you know kind of the norm now for premier sets our first preview card is sleight of hand for one blue mana you get a sorcery where you get to look at the top two cards of your library put one of them into your hand and the other on the bottom of your library this is a, a considered type effect but the downside of it is it is at sorcery speed so i don't think this is going to replace consider index right now next we have tough cookie for one and a green mana you get an artifact creature that's a food golem it's two two and when tough cookie enters the battlefield create a food token for those of you who aren't aware of what food tokens do it's an artifact with pay two and, and tap it to sacrifice this artifact and you gain three life now Tough Cookie has two additional abilities. The first is for three mana, you get to target a non-creature artifact you control and it becomes a four for artifact creature until end of turn. And you can pay two and sacrifice Tough Cookie and gain three life. Now the food themes is gonna be something that is an important mechanic of the set. And they're pushing that a little bit this time to make the food more valuable. And it looks like we're gonna see other cards from the set that have the three mana ability here of targeted non-creature artifact you control and it becoming an artifact creature so we'll have to see if there's a deck that's going to be built around this certainly there are some other good artifacts that this will work fine with next we've got restless fortress it's a land and restless fortress enters the battlefield tapped it is a dual land and that's important it gives you white or black mana Okay, so that in and of itself makes it valuable. But what I think, and we're going to see a cycle of these within the Wilds of Eldraine, where each of them not only is a dual land, but it also is a creature land. So for four mana, two colorless, a white, and a black mana, Restless Fortress becomes a 1-4 white and black nightmare creature until end of turn. It's still a land. And when Ever Restless Fortress attacks, defending player loses two life and you gain two life. And we're going to see other lands similar to this in all of the enemy colors from the set. So it'll be interesting to see the impact of these creature lands on standard. Next, we have Cruel Somnophage for one and a black mana. You get a nightmare. Cruel Somnophage's power and toughness are each equal to the number of creature cards in all graveyards. So the fact that it's all graveyards is a really nice effect. The downside of it is that you can't cast it unless you've got a creature in the graveyard because otherwise it will have 0-0 zero, zero for power and toughness and will simply die when it's cast. Now, this is the return of the adventure mechanic as well. And we have Can't Wake Up for one and a blue mana. It's a sorcery and adventure. And target player mills four cards, then exile this card. You may cast the, the creature later from exile. So you're going to put it on adventure. Now, I think what we'll probably see if this does indeed make it in standard is in a in a graveyard deck that is specifically trying to use cards like Old Rustine and um, Tarmogorf type of creatures from the previous sets to go ahead and create a graveyard deck that is going to be pretty powerful. And I think the components are there already, and we'll see if this pushes that deck into competitive play or not. But the return of the adventure mechanic here is great to know that we're gonna see that back again. Next, we have Talion, the Kindly Lord. For two, a blue and a black mana, you get a legendary creature that's a fairy noble. It's a 3-4, and it has flying. And as Talion, the Kindly Lord, enters the battlefield, choose a number between 1 and 10. Whenever an opponent casts a spell with mana value, power, or toughness equal to the chosen number, that player loses two life, and you draw a card. So... 
Talion, I'm not sure is going to see a tremendous amount of play in Standard. I like the effect because most of the time, I think what we'll see because of the power of Black in Standard right now is you're going to choose two. So they're go for the throat and other removal effects that are cost that cost two are going to lead them to losing two life and you draw in a card if they kill Talion. And if they don't, then just casting spells at the two mana level is gonna cost them two life and you get to draw a card every turn. So I think this is playable in standard and we'll have to see if it is gonna be good enough to find its way into Demir, Esper, and or Grixis decks that we've already got in the format right now. Cause I'm not sure, it, it's certainly not as strong as Shieldred is, and because of that, I think it's probably not going to see a tremendous amount of play, at least initially. Next, we have Moonshaker Calvary for five and three white mana. You get a Spirit Knight. That's a 6-6 six, six with flying. And when Moonshaker Calvary enters the battlefield, creatures you control gain flying and get plus X plus X until the end of the turn where X is the number of creatures you control. So very, very powerful creature effect. Basically, if you're playing this and you've got creatures on the board, you're likely to win on that particular turn. And this is an example of Crater Hook Behemoth that we see in green, same type of card, same type of effect, but now white has it as well. So again, the question is going to be, is there a deck that's going to want this? And there may be one in white that would want this kind of effect. Next, we have our last card of the day, which is Ashiok Wicked Manipulator. For three and two black mana, you get a legendary Planeswalker with five loyalty. If you would pay life while your library has at least that many cards in it, exile that many cards from the top of your library. So it's got an interesting ability. Anytime you have to pay life, you can, instead of paying the life, you get to exile cards from the top of your library instead, rather than paying that life effect. So Skrelv effects, where you're paying the two life in Phyrexian mana, then that's gonna to lead to you exiling cards from the top of your library. Now, let's talk about Ashiok's abilities, and then we'll talk about Planeswalkers going forward. So at plus one, Look at the top two cards of your library, exile one of them, and put the other into your hand. So that exile effect is there. For minus two, create two 1-1 one, one Black Nightmare creature tokens with at the beginning of combat on your turn. If a card was put into exile this turn, put a plus one plus one counter on this creature. So I think what we'll see most likely is on the turn Ashiok comes into play, you're probably gonna minus two, create the two nightmares. And then the next turn you'll plus before combat, and then you'll go ahead and get plus one, plus one counters on each of the nightmares and they'll start growing them. And if you got other effects that exile cards, then I think this is going to just continue to snowball. See, I can see this being played in a Rakdos deck because we do have several red cards that exile a card and then you can play it later. So I think that's a really good matchup with Ashiok. And then for minus seven, target player exiles the top X cards of their library where X is the total mana value of cards you own in exile. So Certainly the red effects, those cards go away after a turn or the next turn. So that's really not gonna help with Ashiok's ability, but anything you're putting into exile with a plus one ability, I think that is gonna be where you're gonna get the bang for your buck here with Ashiok. And I don't even think that ultimate is necessarily the way you wanna win the game, but build, building those one one um, black nightmare creature tokens up by exiling something and then they get that additional plus one plus one counter will grow them over a course of time and make them very powerful cards and difficult to deal with and the fact that you can do it on your turn or your opponent's turn in terms of exiling cards i think that's a good advantage now let's talk about planeswalkers going forward arc rosewater at the Pro Tour Barcelona panel said that going forward, we can expect one Planeswalker card in each set. So that's a big change for us. We've seen at least three in most premier sets, and we've also seen like massive amounts of them in the War of the Spark and with Phyrexia All Will Be One. We had 10 Planeswalkers. So 
this is going to lead to, I think, different gameplay as we move forward, as we have fewer Planeswalkers that are available for us to play going forward. Now, does this mean that Planeswalkers are going to be less relevant? No. I'm hoping that we'll get good Planeswalkers like Ashiok here that will be definitely playable in Standard as we move forward. Now, the other thing that they told us about at Pro Tour Barcelona's panel was Enchanted Tales. And here are a couple of examples of Enchanted Tales. Smothering Tithe and Doubling Season. Some very good commander cards that needed some reprinting. So that's great that we'll be seeing that in the Wilds of Eldraine. With each pack you open, you're going to get one enchantment from the Enchanted Tales. And I believe they said there were 63 of these that were going to be in the set. So a lot of great cards we're going to see reprinted throughout the course of Magic's history to put this in that extra sheet of Enchanted Tales. All right, let's take a look at some important dates from the Wilds of Eldraine. So the story will be up from August 8th through August 14th. The debut and premiere video will be on August 15th. Card image galleries will be completed on August 25th, so that's the last day for us for previews. There will be a streamer event on Magic the Gathering Arena on August 31st to get a preview of how the cards work mechanically, given what we already have. And then there will be a pre-release at your local game store on September 1st. If you're in the Atlanta area, come to Caffeinated Gamers on September 1st and join us for our pre-release event. And then Wilds of Eldraine releases on Arena on September 5th. And WPN Game Stores will have an open house on September 8th through the 10th for the set. And then Friday Night Magic begins on September 8th and will run through November 3rd. So what that tells us is November 3rd is going to be the release of the next premiere set that we'll see this year. All right, thanks for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed the previews. And I will be back with more previews from the wilds of Eldraine. I'll see you next time. Thank you.